field warning interweb answers with Artifexian part one, Conline. What are some of your favorite grammatical features that aren't in English? I don't know, it's gonna sound really boring, but gender? Like in English, it makes no sense to say something like complete the following, this blank. And the options are like house, door, and cheese. Whereas in the likes of German that has grammatical gender, that is an entirely valid question to ask because the nouns are gendered and the gender manifests itself on the article. So there is only one answer, der Käse. And that's a really cool sort of consequence of a gender system. Also, a proper grammaticalized second person plural would definitely not go amiss. Favorite conlang and do you speak any conlangs fluently? Uh, not fi, probably, and no. What do you suggest is the best way to introduce a conlang in a novel? I think it's worth bearing in mind that readers won't care, at least initially, they won't care as much about your conlang as you do. So you should introduce it in small quantities. You know, a couple of place names, maybe the odd royal title or two, something like that. But don't dump vast quantities of your conlang on your readers. What languages would you like to learn? I mean, all of them, uh, that would be great. But if I had to limit the field somewhat, I'd say South Korean, uh, Kosa, and Irish. Are there any languages that restrict the amount of syllables per word? Could this work in a conlang? You know, I don't know. And my gut is telling me probably not because languages like taking words and smashing them together, you know, like tree and house, tree house. And that practice, which is a very naturalistic one, would quickly run into any limitations set by max syllable count. That being said, could it work in a conlang? Yeah, sure, anything can work in a conlang. Conlanging is, is art. I'd like to incorporate regional accents and dialects into my conlang. Any tips on how to go about this? Look up a list of all the dialects present in the language you speak. Have a look at the phonology of each of those dialects and cross-reference it with the sort of standard pronunciation like General American English or RP and see where the differences are. Look for shifts like how in my dialect, the dental fricatives, th and the, are realized as alveolar stops, t and d. So I don't say 33 and a third, I say 33 and a third, much to the joy of the internet. Mergers are another big thing in dialect. So the cot cot merger, you know, some dialects will say, I caught a ball, the baby sleeps in a cot, as opposed to I caught the ball, the baby sleeps in a cot. Study those elements. Interesting related note though, if you are doing some world building and you have a map, I would suggest figuring out where the origin point of your language is. And in the region, the geographic region surrounding said origin point, pack tons of dialects. And then the further you move away from that origin point, have less and less dialectal variation. This is a phenomenon we see play out in the real world all the time. Like compare the amount of dialects found in Ireland and England, say, to the amount of dialects found in America. The closer you are to the birthplace of a language, the more dialectal variation there should be. The further away you are, the less dialectal variation. How do I make a question? Um, so you could do like an intonation rise as the sentence progresses. You could mess with the word order. You could introduce like sentence initial particles that indicate that this sentence is a question. You could stick them at the end of the sentence, in which case you'd have sentence final particles that indicate the sentence is a question. Or you could even inflect the verb to show a question. There are many, many weird and wonderful ways of creating a question in your conlang. I know that's not what you're getting out that question, but you know, I'm a nerd. Is this a good question? I mean, it does one of the aforementioned things. It's not the most adventurous of systems, but yeah, it, it, it works. Your conlang may catch on someday. Part two, world building. With all the world building videos you've done on world creation, what is one thing you would change about the planet Earth? You know, I think I'd probably give it a second major moon. That would be really cool. On a scale of one to 10, how much do you believe that geography affects the culture of a civilization? So this is really hard to quantify. I'd err on the side of saying that geography and environment and all of that does play a role in how a culture develops but I'm not in the Jared Diamond school of thought where it's like geography did everything and there are no other factors, it's just geography. I think geography is one of a myriad of factors that contribute to how a culture would progress. What are the worst things you can do when world building? Also, do you have any pets? Okay, so the big one would be racist to create racist analogs. Big no-no, don't do that. Uh, ripping off other people's work, like when uh, Avatar came out, like the blue people Avatar. Every man and his dog wanted 
floating magnetic islands. And thirdly, revealing too much. World building is like an iceberg. 90% of it should be hidden and completely opaque to your audience. Only give them 10%. Oh yeah, and always split rivers. 100% of the time, don't care what anyone tells you, split every single river whenever you can. That was a joke, don't, don't split the rivers. As for pets, both yes and no. No, I don't own my own pet, but yes, I have a pet in that I am currently fostering cats. Turns out being a YouTuber who spends all of their time at home is the perfect job for doing a bit of good in the world when it comes to animal welfare. Favorite world building genre? Like all of them, <laughs> but I suppose at the moment, uh, maybe alternate earth perhaps, like I'm watching an awful lot of Handmaid's Tale and the world building in Handmaid's Tale is just amazing, like unparalleled in recent times. It's so, so good. Do you have any advice for people who are new to world building? Immerse yourself in as much good world building as possible. Go to the world building subreddit, links in the description. Listen to people who create good works of world building talk about what they're doing. Consume as many established works as possible. So like Tolkien, Sanderson, Martin, Banks, watch Star Wars, watch Star Trek, all that sort of jazz. Soak it all in and then begin creating. And don't be afraid to make mistakes and do silly things and do stupid things. You'll iron out those kinks as you go. What's your favorite aspect of world building? Without a doubt, the learning. What is the meaning of life on a constructed world? 40, like three? Maybe, I don't know. Part three, random stuff. What are the best worst national anthems in your opinion? Best would be USA, France, and Italy. Italy's anthem is great, I love Italy's anthem. And worst would be the USA. How can I write an anthem for my fictional planet or country? Where to start? Um, in terms of the text, you're looking at hyper-patriotism, hyper-nationality, and a sort of like, call to arms sort of thing, a sort of rallying nationalistic cry. That's that's the sort of like vibe you want to be going for. In terms of the melody, remember that the job of a national anthem is to invoke sort of civic pride. So we should all be able to sing along to this tune. Ergo, don't make it insanely difficult. Keep the vocal range very narrow, no crazy quick runs, that sort of thing. Like very, very simple easy to sing. Incidentally, there's a really cool video by Adam Neely analyzing the American National Anthem that kind of goes through this process. Check it out, links in the description. Ever thought of doing a music building video to tie in with your musical background? I can safely say this is the one area I will never in a million years touch on this channel for the very reason that I have a musical background. If you want to see great music content, check out the aforementioned Adam Neely and also 12 Tone. Again, all in the description, all amazing, I, I know you love them. What do you think the most unique national flag in the world is? So if unique is the criteria, then by definition, Nepal, the Vatican, and Switzerland. But some of my favorite flags are Burundi, Guyana, Jamaica, Kenya, North Korea, Panama, the Seychelles, I really like the Seychelles flag. South Africa, South Korea, and Trinidad and Tobago. Would you consider taking on another researcher, writer, or editor to help speed up the production process? No to researcher or writer, yes to editor slash animator. It's just that they're costly and I can't afford them at the moment, unfortunately. What do you use to edit your videos? So I use Illustrator to create the graphics. I use After Effects to put the graphics together. I use Premiere Pro to edit any footage coming out of this camera and I use Adobe Audition to edit any audio. Where do you find all the information you need for conlanging? Free academic papers on the internet and academic publications. Language construction kit is, is a good one uh, by Mark Rosenfelder, links in the description. Then we have the advanced language construction kit by the same author, obviously. Um, Mood and Modality is another book I have by, this is published by Cambridge Textbooks in Linguistics and similarly uh, Aspect, published by the same crowd. FYI, Cambridge Textbooks in Linguistics are a great, great resource, and I would highly recommend checking them out. Some of their stuff is a bit dense, uh, other, others are more approachable, but yeah, well worth checking out. Would you ever write a book? So if Artifact Scene ever comes to an end, I doubt that's gonna happen, but like if it does, I'm gonna compile all the information I've learned over these many years I've been doing this and put it in a book and self-publish it or something. What's your favorite historical empire or kingdom? Oh, I'm gonna be really boring here and say the Mongols because like they're the Mongols. Are you a nerd fighter? I am indeed. What's your favorite dish? Salty licorice. What's your favorite variation of donut? I'm not a huge donut fan, but 
if ever they make a triple salted licorice donut, I'm willing to give donuts another shot. What would be the Starship Artifexian's registration code and why? Canonically, the Artifexian registration code was NCC1729A. NCC because that's what's on Trek, 1729 because it's Ramanujan's number, and A because Artifexian. What's the furthest you've ever been from home? That would be Indonesia, and Google Maps tells me it's about 12 and a half thousand kilometers away, which is insane. Turns out, Earth is really big. Zebras or giraffes? And I think you'd have to ask Tierzu about that, but I'm gonna go with giraffes. That being said, the clear winner always is penguins. Who are some of your favorite educational YouTubers, and for that matter, YouTubers in general? The aforementioned ones, 12 Tone and Adam Neely, and then Casey Neistat, MKBHD, Peter McKinnon, Kurzgesagt, Smarter Every Day, Dong, Vihart, Tierzu, Caspian Report, Number File, Tree Blue One Brown, CGB Grey, that kind of thing. And finally, the question that like 90% of you asked, will you be making a video about X? The vast majority of people ask this question. I'm a little bit serious here for a second. We need to talk about this. If the topic you want to hear about is related to the construction of fictional worlds, then yes, I want to make that video. The problem is time, my brain and structure. So time takes a long time to make videos, especially when you're a one man operation. My brain, I'm in this for the learning, so I don't just want to blitz through various topics to get to a certain point. And structure, I'm on a strict top-down trajectory. So I start with like stars and galaxies and I'm working my way down to the more low-level stuff like religions, cultures, that sort of thing. If the topic you want to hear about is sort of in the general vicinity of where I'm at, you may well get that video within a matter of weeks few months, that sort of thing. If the topic you want is super low level, then it could literally be years before we get there. I've already been at this four years and I feel like I haven't even begun to scratch the surface. So I really want to encourage people not to wait on me. Like go off and do your own world building and then check back in with me every so often and use any videos I happen to release um, as a means to update what you've already done. Please don't wait for me to start creating. We're going to get nowhere then. If you're like, Boo. I want something completely different right now. Uh, I advise going to a new, very, very new channel called World Building Notes. I think she only has something like 500-ish subscribers. Go check her out. Uh, you'll get your cultural world building fixed there. It's not a tutorial channel like mine. It's very, very different. I think you'll dig it. Um, for those tech heads and futurists out there, check out Isaac Arthur. Anyways, I hope I haven't scared 9% of you people off. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching all of my videos. And until next time, Edgar out.